so I guess I'll follow. Yeah, we'll just, just have a conversation. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We have. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I will do my best. <laughs> but yeah, I'll follow you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome to the Father State. I am Destiny Peterson. The Father State is on Patreon, so click the Patreon link in the description to support our work. Thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate it. Very interesting discussion coming up for you. I have with me Reverend uh, Gioki. Gioke? Gioke. Yeah, that's how it is. Gioke. And you with the Yoma Buddha? Yokoyama. Yokoyama. That's your name? That's my last name. Oh, Yokoyama. It's the last name. And he is a Buddhist priest at the So Jin. Oh, Sozenji Temple. Amazing. Y'all need to start naming yourself like the So Holy something. You know, <laughs> normal American stuff. The Buddhist Temple in Mo uh, Montebello, California. Thank you so much for coming oh, thank on. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, I really, really appreciate it. I, you know, I, I, I have been wanting to talk to you for a while because I hear a lot of people, well, some people tell me that what I'm teaching mm. is like what the Buddhists teach. And so I, I have a lot of questions about uh -huh. that because I grew up in Alabama and when I was growing up, uh -huh. it was mostly Baptists. That's all, right. all I knew about. There were no Catholics around me or anything, just Baptist religion. Okay. So I have a lot of questions about this. Um, so you are a Buddhist priest, right? How did that happen? Um, so I know some people do question, like, isn't it supposed to be a monk, a nun, right? Uh, where we keep celibacy. But in, in Japan, so like, my story is like, I was born and raised in Japan in a Buddhist temple family. Okay. And then uh, this sort of, uh, in, I guess, in, involves a story of how Buddhism in Japan sort of evolved where it, it did start as a monastic style, but in 1800s, uh, when the, uh, the government was sort of turned over uh, from the shogunate government to the more democratic government, uh, along with that came uh, national religion of Shintoism. Um, and so that was a time sort of a Buddhist uh, temples and communities in a way lost its resources including land, financial means, and many shoguns were also like donors and supporters. Right. So in a sense, the structure of Buddhist temple community kind of lost its foundation. So from there, there was a sort of, you know, this more solid monastic style where the monks were trained and then these monks were elected in a more of a lineage-based tradition. Then World War II happened, and that was another blow for Buddhist communities where American government, interim government, uh, sort of um, well, took care of our country, but at, at the same time, they redistributed the lands of the temples. Mm -hmm. And again, that was a moment the temples sort of lost the means to keep going uh, in, a, in a monastic way. And then one of the solutions we came up with, it's my understanding, is that we kind of recreated this hereditary system. So the temple's family, uh, you know, they were raised, supported by the community. Mm -hmm. And then typically the elder, eldest son takes care of the temple by taking over his father's temple. Okay. So I was the youngest uh, in the family, but my elder brother had um, a little illness when he was very young. I was sort of expected to take over the temple. And then, you know, when you talk about it, that means you, you do get married, you do get, you have children, and among the children, we select one uh, who takes over the temple. Oh, I see. It's more of us, that's how the society, or the temple adapted to this new circumstances or situation. Uh, so you became a Buddhist priest. Would you have had, did you have to do it, or could you have told your father, no, I don't want to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I think my grandfather was quite passionate about raising me as a Buddhist monk. Oh, okay. And all I wanted to be was 
um, be, uh, I guess, good, what do you call it? This good son of the community, right? right? As I even, in elementary school days, I remember talking about in, in front of the whole school, like, I am going to be a Buddhist priest in this community. Wow. <laughs> and the school principal was like, hmm. Amazing. And so a Buddhist monk, what is a monk as I hear? So I know, I think I understand what a Buddhist is, but what is a monk? Or is that the same? I would usually, just my personally, I would usually connect the monkhood in the monastic context. And what does monastic mean? That means uh, you leave behind or sort of behind, but you know, it's not like you cut the relationship or anything, but you bring yourself out into the world of monastic life. And so it's not like you're constantly talking to your family or friends. You become part of the song. And I, I believe I, you know, I feel more of that model style in Theravada tradition and Theravada means the school of elders where they observe the Shakyamuni Buddha's teaching as a lifestyle. So they wear the orange or brown robes. Oh, yeah. They have a more strict dress code. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And the Mahayana school, which came through China and Korea and Japan, which we have inherited, uh, it sort of evolved even the way we dress. And then we, how can I say? Um, there's um, adaptation to the society. So getting married, having children was another way of adopting after these two major events in the Japanese Buddhist history. Oh, okay. Right, so. So does the, do the, um, does the yellow, the people in the yellow and orange, uh -huh. do they get along with the people in the black? <laughs> We, as a Buddhist community, we have one thing common, which is we take, there are few translations, expressions, but we, some, we suggest that we respect the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and we call them the three treasures or three gems. And that's the common thread that runs through the entire Buddhist oh, I got community. Yeah. Uh, so just for my record, Buddha is the little fat guy that sits around <laughs> in the cafe and people put money in there, right? That's a lot. I, I think it's a laughing <laughs> Buddha, right? Yes, right. I, I, I see the statue. You see that, in right? Restaurants, yes. That's the same guy? Um, uh, imitation of the same guy? Okay, that's... Um, that's sh um, let, me, let me say... Um, Buddha is, um, it's a, I don't know, what's the word? It's not, it's a, it's a honorific noun. It basically means awakened ones. Right. Right. So, yeah. so it's, it's a, some people are just like adjective. Uh, so Shakyamuni Buddha was a person we consider as a teacher. So. Is he like a god? Uh, no. It, no. So with the Buddhist religion, is it about, do you believe in good and evil? We, ha we use terms, right? So we, we practice, we embo um, not embody, <laughs> we, we do good and we refrain from doing bad, evil. I, I've seen some text like translations using evil the word evil. okay yeah. and so is there a god above buddha um we use a term called the buddha nature awakened nature um i know i do have sorry i don't mean to pretend that i, I know christianity but i I did have a bit of interesting conversation about the Christ nature, right? right? There's yes. a word like that. Yeah. Um, we do not sort of, you know, we talk about in the Buddhist cosmology, there's a, there's a heavenly realm, there's a human realms, and there's animal realms, and all these six different realms that we talk about. Um, personally, we do have a vague sense of the unknown. We neither, we neither negate or make an attempt to define it. And I think that's because of, and Buddhists do have a tendency to not go into that converse, 
well, we we'll talk about it sometimes, it not, but this, uh, this cosmology, this idea, understanding, a pursuit of this, what this world is made of, how the world is made is, was not, uh, our understanding is not, was not encouraged by the Buddha because it would not lead us to uh, awakening. A piece. Oh. It, yeah. So I'm, I'm black and slow. Okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so in the Christian religion, we know that there is a God. Right, right. Uh, and there is a devil mm. or Satan. Do the Buddhists believe that there is a God above the Buddhists that walking uh -huh. around? You believe there is a, a God above him? Uh, yes or no? That's... Uh, Right, if you say yes or no, I think I would go more like toward... <laughs> um, sorry if I'm wasting your time here, <laughs> but... Um, the God that we talk about in a Christian context, the Catholicism, is... Uh, just my personal take, is I see that more kind of close to dharma, the truth itself we talk about. That's beyond. So that this. truth is it? God is about the real God. The way Zen people describe this truth, uh, we sometimes use the words vastness or suchness. And we, what, the reason why we use this vastness is it's because it's our beyond our comprehension, our own. Uh, definition. So does this comprehension come from God or from yourself? That's a very deep question. <laughs> <laughs> um, this comprehension that we can't, let's say, access through our five senses or consciousness, it almost sounds like, right? This so is it comes like, from self. There's one of the I'm sorry, I, I don't mean to sort of avert these questions, but one of, the, one of the challenges that we have, but also the endeavor we take is that we try to transcend this self. And if I use, maybe allowed to use the word God and this, uh, what's beyond the God. And then so um, we drop these boundaries and then out of this whole oneness comes a deeper understanding. Um, that's the kind of um, approach that we take. And, and so for me, black and slow, right? Does, are you saying, no, this comprehension does not come from a God above, but it comes from the five senses of yourself? Sorry, could you say that? That comprehension that you get, is that from God or from self? Yes, from self or God? Again, this is my personal expression, course, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, my personal take is that this understanding comes from the God and comes from the self. And I say this, it's both um, the different two and one, but one and the two at the same time, because there is, um, again, this is just one expression I used in the conversation with Christian Friends, <laughs> Christian friends, yeah. If, if we are not the embodiment of the God, let's say, then, so it's like tapping into this so does, deeper wisdom. Does, yeah. the, um, does the, the self become one with the God? You could, you could, you could say that. I, I think you could say that, yeah. And is there a hell? Hell is another thing. Uh, you know, you ha we have the specific term called hell realm in the six realms that we, you know, we don't talk a lot about transmigrations, but we have that as a part of understanding. So we go through these realms. Some say it's more literal, like after this life, there's this, this next life. Some say it's happening in this very moment, like, you know, as an as, uh, entity, we are going through these realms moment by moment. So there's a varying degrees of sorry, varying interpretations. Do you believe that there is a Satan? We see that more as a um, state of human mind. 
Oh, I see. Yeah. So it's just a state of mind, but not reality. Um, you know, I know Indian, ancient Indian beliefs, they, they have words like ghosts, something equivalent to ghosts. And Japan is known, kind of like <laughs> England, for all the ghost stories. Right. And one of the things I did in my hometown, maybe I mentioned it once in one of the videos, that we go out there and commemorate those spirits who, of people who died in the battlefield from medieval period, like hundreds of years ago. Right. And we are afraid. Yes, people are afraid. But uh, we also have a ritual or ceremonies to invite them all. Invite those spirits? <laughs> yes, when I what share the? this with a, you know, a Protestant friends, like, no, you can't do that. Right? I know. Do you believe there are good and evil spirits? Um, the way I explain it is we have lost souls. Lost souls? Right. Lost them to the evil ones? Uh, lost means delusional. Delusional, oh. right? So if you, let's say, you know, it's like, oh, sorry, one of the like, ghost stories in Japan, if you are, let's say, killed in such an atrocious way and murdered, or you have someone that you care about, you can't leave behind, and then your sort of spirits kind of dwells, like there's a residue or something, and you know, like attachment or anger or hatred or ignorance of this, you know, the nature of life kind of uh, takes form in that sort of way. So we. You know, it's, it may sound really supernatural, but as a solid part of tradition, what we do is we um, consult, we listen to those pains. You listen to the dead? Um, not like literally, literally, <laughs> but we, we, we sort of, uh, I don't know what's the word, like tune into in a very subtle way. Oh yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so you tune into the dead? I think you could say that, yeah. <laughs> and where, and where are they? Um, huh, where are they? <laughs> okay. <laughs> amazing. Is Isn't it? Isn't it like amazing? Uh -huh. Where are they? They are, huh? Deities. We have all the deities everywhere, right? Everywhere we have deities in the corner of the street in Japan. And there's the deities in the shrine, in the temple. The part, it's a part of temple, too. Oh, yeah? So they hang it out in the streets and in the temple? Ah. Uh, we don't really see them that way. Do you hear them? No. How do you know that they are there? It's, uh, for, for our culture, it is a direct expression of the, the very limit that we have as humans about perceiving this world. And when we kind of uh, dishonor or overlook their presence, like, we're not, we're not really literally looking at them, but then the, the, their very presence is a great reminder for us that our perception, five senses, our consciousness, can't not comprehend. And the, even to think that we have an entire picture and that, that we have, an, it's, it's like a child who's saying, yes, I know everything about this world, right? Good. And we're not that different from that child oh, in okay. a sense, so. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and so, do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Oh. Um, so, could you, I know I, I tried to uh, understand it a bit more before this session, yeah. but could you explain it a little bit more? I believe that we fall away from God. Mm. When we were born into families that are all screwed up. They call, as little children, they cause you to fall away from God by making you angry okay. and judgmental. And so, and so we have to return to God, right? So do you mm. believe we're in a fallen state or have we returned to God already? Fallen states, fallen states. Fallen away from God. Yeah, yeah. We, we just explained that a little bit differently, the fallen from your own original nature. 
and that's kind of how Zen people use as an expression. Yeah. You're a little off the state of what you are originally, because there's layers and layers of, let's say, information from SNS, information from the media, information from, yeah, the, yeah right? There's, yeah. And then on top of that, when we see that as reality and we start keep bear, bearing them, uh, that perception with another perception, which often is not based on the reality sometimes. Right. So, right. So have you returned to your original nature? <laughs> <laughs> um, I like that idea that there is that sort of a place that we are in touch with. Are you even there? Though, even though we are not, we do not believe it. Like, oh, I'm not in touch with it. But we say, yes, but you are. But then uh, what it does as an understanding to me in a conscious level is that how, <laughs> how misled I am by myself. Oh. Right? So fallen, yes, I think if you use the word fallen, we could use that word, and that we always start from that recognition. Okay, you said you have said that you consider these times the era of Dhamma. Am I saying that right, Dhamma? <laughs> uh, that, yes, right. Okay. Uh, there's a what right is the dharma. era of Dhamma? So there is. Uh, I hope I can explain it right. <laughs> so when Shakyamuni Buddha was around, there was a teacher we could always come back to for advice. And after his passing, you know, there's the, we have this under, we have this sort of chronological understanding of scale that after his passing and then Dharma is sort of, there's a, is a phase where Dharma or sort of deteriorates. You could probably say like laziness, corruption, institutionalization, things like that. Then there's a time when the Dharma is uh, basically not available because nobody is practicing the Dharma. What is the Dharma exactly? Dharma is, um, in a stricter definition, it's the teaching of the Buddha or oh. Buddhas. And then Vinaya and Sila, which are basically the, the precepts we follow. And so at some point that disappear? So actually we are in that sort Oh, we're in that area <laughs> now. So is the Dharma evil? I mean... When you say these are the times uh, of, of the era of the Dharma, no, is the, that no, a no, good? The, 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 this is the, considered the, the time where the Dharma is not really available. Oh, he's not here. Right, right. Dharma is uh, this, this whole... Is that a bad thing? I believe so. <laughs> oh, it is? <laughs> and what is the evidence that this is the era of the Dharma? What is the proof of that, the evidence of that? This, this is more like a myth that we have. <laughs> I mean, some people might be at, mad at me if I say the myth. <laughs> but then there's a future Buddha who will appear. Oh, he's going to come. It's kind of, I know it's very similar to the idea of Messiah. Right. right. Yeah. And so we have the past Buddha, and then, uh, and then we have a future. But then in Mahayana, well, which Buddhism, which we inherited in East Asia, we have a thing called bodhisattvas who are aspiring to reach an attainment. We're still in a human body and choose to dwell in this, if I can borrow your word, this fallen state. Oh, okay. and dwell in a fallen state. And yeah. so when this Buddhist come back, the monk or whatever, uh, he gonna bring back the good times? Uh, or enlightened times? Enlightened times. I, I suppose you can I suppose you can say it that way. Where is yeah. he now? Is yet to be born? Oh, the Buddhists need to yeah, be born. I, I, uh, yeah. And will he be born through a woman? That's a very interesting question. Actually, I I don't know. You don't know how. Yeah. You know? Oh, okay. Because the Christians think that Jesus is coming back on a carrot with a white horses, uh -huh. flames of fire, okay. and all that. But yeah, but Dahmer's. The, uh, the, the Buddhist is not coming like that. We, at least it's for myself, I, we haven't really talked about how the future would. I mean, we have them as sort of a very, not vague. <laughs> I, know, I know my Christian friend said, like, we need a more clear cut answer, right? <laughs> <laughs> but we have that as a, um, 
like a, not a prediction, but a concept as an idea. But we don't really talk about this. Again, I think this is aligned with this basic way of life that we have, that this sort of a, a discussion could create a dispute, could create disharmony sometime. So when you die, you will die one day, right? Yes, you, yes. You will die. Where will you go? There's a few expressions. In my particular tradition, in Japanese, in Japanese American tradition, right. we use a word, source. We go back to the source. And where is the source? Ah. There's an expression that I've just learned from one of my uh, well, respected teachers, uh, that we emerge from here and we, we disappear into here. Oh. That's, that's one expression I have heard and I, I'm sort of yeah. sp spoke to me. Again. So when you leave this body, you just go into another body or another just out there? There's no another thing. It's but, just everything is, how would I say? We emerge out of, oh, we use the word emptiness, which sounds quite terrible if you don't have that kind of a background now, right. right? Emptiness yeah. is like intertwined, the very nature that nothing at all is existing all by itself. Right? So when you leave this physical body, we all know you now, right? We, mm -hmm. We're looking at you. So when your breath leave this physical body, right. it just goes into a nothingness? Into... Because we're going to put you in a box, dig the ground, and put you in the ground, right? Right. Do they bury Buddhists or do they burn them? We have a tradition of cremation. Oh, okay. But so, also here, I think people do get buried as without right, cremation. Right. Yeah. So when you die, we're going to put you in the oven. And, <laughs> yes. And set you on fire, your physical body. Uh -huh. But your spirit will do what? Spirits. Right. Spirits. Y your real self. Um, the real self that we perceive as ourself with a consciousness, uh, um, we say but this self is made of n everything other than what we perceive as a self. Right. So we just return to, to everything, that. right? Oh, I see. And we come back, and then we have the same conscious. We may see it as you know. Will you come back as reincarnated? Uh, we have that, yes, we have that understanding, yeah. Have you died before and came back? That's kind of, I guess, we, how we see ourselves, although we don't talk about it too much. Right. Yeah. So for us, have you died before? I... Have you been here before? Right, in a sense that this isn't the starting point. Right. There's a starting point that's... We, we use beginningless starting point. There's, yeah. And so you was here before as someone else or something else? Or something else or someone else. And yeah. did you know you were here before? When you were here, did you know you were here? I have no idea. You don't remember anything <laughs> about it. And next time you leave your body and come back as something, do you want to come back as an animal or a human being? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think I mentioned it, like dol yeah. dolphin is one of animals because the way they communicate. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's actually, it's a little bit uh, against the basic principle because Shakyamuni Buddha is talking about, we try to seize this, you can call that an art or, or this wanting to become. And then that's what creates us this as into a form. So I think our ultimate goal is to stay in the source, stay as an ocean. Right. And we don't want to be so much of this bubbly, like, you know, wave constantly coming back. And then, right. Yeah. But if you could come back, what would you want to come back as? <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still kind of sticking to that. You know, I like that idea of dolphin, but <laughs> anything, a human being, and I, going through another life experience and yeah. struggle, um, everything is worth it. I think um, anything is anything is good. Um, yeah. Amazing. So, <laughs> what, what about? I mean, do you think about this? This is a different uh, year, right? I Meaning, Christianity, you go 
back right. to back to heaven. Back right. To, right. Yeah. Some people do. Some people go to hell. <laughs> okay. Maxine Water going to hell. You know who Maxine Waters is? Sorry. She a black uh, politician. Okay. She going to hell. No, I'm playing. <laughs> uh, I got to ask you this. You said that people in the worst state in this time mm. until Buddha appear. Um, and so are you mean that the unconscious and violence and no love and all that? Do you mean that? Uh, again, my understanding is that's the period people are not practicing Dharma, may, basically following the precepts, basically trying to live harmless life, trying to be uh, or uh, moral or ethical or you can say it in different ways, but right. people are, you can say people are less conscious, you know. Um, right, that's for sure. Right. And that's, and then at the same time, there, we have this kind of a recognition that people who constantly remind us recognition in the midst of the chaos. So there's still this interaction going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, when you meditate, you meditate, right? Yes. Meditate. Are you focusing on something in particular, or are you just observing? Observing as they are is what maybe the first instruction they may get, like a vipassana, right? What happens in your body with consciousness? Um, easy to be said, but it's so hard to do. In Zen, we have this uh, thing called shikan taza, what's particularly unique to my school, it's called Soto Zen, um, of non-thinking, non-artifice, non-intention. Because anything intentional, anything that we generate from within would already adding, or distorting, or deducting something from what is. So we sit with what is. And sometimes that's not comfortable. Even with discomfort, we sit as it is. So when you sit and you meditate, are you just sitting there watching whatever comes, or are you focusing on something in particular? We try not to focus on anything, anything. in particular, whether it's the thoughts or sensation. Oh. And I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you, so I know some people do think that there is a nice way to bring you to the state where you feel very calm, but that's not even, well, maybe it's a great passage, but where, whether it's a thought, I think we do not want to sort of uh, dwell or be attached to even approach itself. So we, there is a consciousness, this actual experience. In actuality, there's a thought. <laughs> One time I was sitting quietly, there's this huge commercial song popped up yeah. <laughs> out of nowhere. Like, yeah. and that must be something from days ago that I was watching. And then it emerges and disappears. Oh, okay. Right? So Amazing. And so are you, do you have anger? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, you yes. do? And where did your anger come from? How did you become angry? Angry, angers, um, I, I say it's ignorance. It's directly connected with the ignorance. You know, I, part, I, individual, as an individual, I always thought it's relatively easy to handle anger if it's because of, let's say, something that I see as unfair to me, and I did have, always had a difficult time when that sort of unfair, from my perspective, the unfair treatment was directed to someone like vulnerable in the society, right? And this is something we're seeing in today's world too. And then that kind of anger, uh, I always thought that kind of anger was somehow justifiable, but then <laughs> I guess I was quite wrong about that. Yeah. Yeah. Were you raised by your father and mother? My father's mother were there. Uh, your father and mother? Mother was around with me right until I was uh, 12, 12. Your yes. mother died or something, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she died uh, at 12. So, yes, I was Was really she was angry? You know, she left, it's a personal story, but she left the diary um, writing toward, until to the point where she could no longer write the diary. And we read um, yeah, a message in one of the, those pages that 
I'm sure she was going through all different emotions. Yeah. And one, t one day she was writing, why is it happening to me? Uh, just that particular line, I remember. And she was also worried if her children would remember her as they get to be older. Oh. And do you remember her? I have these fragments of memories, uh, like when she's working in the kitchen, she's uh, dressed in kimono, uh, but my memory of her voice has got a little blurry, which I feel quite ashamed. Why? I, I've tried to remember, you know, remembering is so important for us, for, for, for our tradition too. Oh, yeah. it's important to remember your mother? Oh, her family. Oh. Asians, you know, all Asians, Jap and Japanese included, we, we have this family value that put us together. I noticed that Japanese women are real mean and controlling. <laughs> 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 Why is that? Uh, Have you noticed that? I know like some like American men come and then, you know, Japanese girls, uh, women, uh, we are quite conscious of how we dress, how we talk. And then there's a um, certain culture in Japan where we have to always be respectful in, to, to the society in more like um, kind of, I don't know, it's a compliance culture, you could say. It's, um, like we comply with the social norm, what's expected at the time. Even during this COVID, right? We have COVID-19 and uh. it's expe we're expected to wear a mask. We're expected to follow the social rules and not following, complying with it. It's just not only you know, whether it poses risk or not, it's more of a social thing. Right. Like you are not really complying or being a part of the good community member or something like that. So do the Chinese men comply to the women or do the women comply to the men? Um, I think that still exists. I don't want to make it sound like Japan has really got modernized. I mean, although there is a lot of influence from the United States, yeah. uh, the dynamic between women and men are they're still um, what I would call something that has become a part of cultural norm. So there are people who would feel the discomfort, something wrong about it, but approaching it is like kind of going against the very culture itself sometimes. And that you can imagine is very, very challenging and difficult. You were married before, right? Yes. And you had a child? Mm -hmm. And a son. Yes. And how old is your son now? Uh, he's, he's eight. He's eight years yeah. old? Um, when you were married, did your wife control you or you control her? Um, I think it went both ways because we need it. And I, I, I feel, <laughs> I feel <laughs> sorry for that. You know, like maybe it's just the way I was raised as the youngest. I mean, I am pretty... How would I say? <laughs> when I set my goal, right, and this is what I will do, I tend to go right to the goal. And I, marriage was, um, I think it still is, even today, co-parenting. You know, it's a lesson of compromising, yeah. understand. And compromising, that happens rather naturally. And, but I wasn't, you know, I have to say, I was just so focused. I wasn't being a good listener. To and your I, wife? But you know why, right? Mm -hmm. Because women talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you agree? I do you like this all the time? I like that particular expression. <laughs> I know it <laughs> creates probably quite controversial, but you know, uh, why, why women are so um, like, mad or crazy around men is because all men are basically stupid. Is that what they say? <laughs> no, that's just one thing we sell uh, on somewhere. Was that social media? Yeah. Was that, okay, what well, kind of makes sense? Uh, uh, who is stronger, men or women? Who is stronger? In what term? Period. Hmm? Who, who, is, who is 
who are stronger, who is the strongest, men or women, in dealing with life? Uh, I mean, no doubt, physically, men tend to have. Uh, how about emotionally? Uh, I often think of biological cycle too. Some say men are more vulnerable because they don't have this cycle, natural cycle. Women do have a longevity, right? You know I mean, why, right? Because mm -hmm. they kill men. <laughs> um, men don't know how to handle them. That's an interesting question. That's an interesting thing that comes I hear from, let's say, somebody from Christian, because, you know, Buddhism does have a little, like, sort of a monastic-based way of life. And, but then Christianity, the part of Christianity that I experienced is all about relationship, relationship with the God yeah. and the relationship with all the brotherhood, right? Right. And that focus on that relationship is something I, I admire. And I personally really like about that yeah. you know, focus. Yeah. How long were you married for? Four years, I believe, four years, yeah. Four years? Yeah. And uh, did you divorce your wife or she divorced you? <laughs> um, I, I feel a little bit, um, I, sorry, I feel a little bit uncomfortable, to be honest. Okay, because well, you know, this is I a understand. Public, but I, I know... If you don't want to talk a, about it, you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Because I think there are difference in interpretations and what legally happened, so... Yeah. Right. Um, will you ever marry again? To be honest? <laughs> no. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I, I do... I, I don't know if... I say sometimes it's just a Confucianist culture that when we have a child and... I didn't realize I would just so be attached to my son. And I like, you, you know, so like what? I'm a Buddhist person, right? You were so what? No, I, 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 I do love You my, say you my were son. attached to him or you were not? Huh? You, were, you were attached to your son, but you were not. I, lo I know, I, wherever we are and whatever happens in our life, I made a pledge, a vow to dedicate my rest of my life to my son. Right on. And that's... That's that, amazing. I was surprised at that myself, yeah, too. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> I wasn't sure what kind of parent I would be. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And so, does he live with you or with your ex? He's with his mom. Uh, but he, he, he's legally eligible to live in California, too, in case uh, if anything happens. Uh -huh. But he's a Canadian citizen, so he, he can live there with no problem. Oh. The only thing was that I have Japanese nationality, right? But I don't have any kind of legal footing, neither in Canada or here. Oh, so, so you were married to a Canadian uh -huh. and not a Chinese? <laughs> no, no, no. Not a Japanese? No. Is Chinese and Japanese the same? Are they the same? I say uh, some people are similar. Of course, there's always exceptions, but as a whole, I think there's. Uh, Difference, of course. So you were married. You had an interracial marriage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What the? <laughs> That's the response I got from my congregation in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Why you didn't marry your own kind? Ah, uh, they to me, huh? <laughs> I think I wanted my son to be. Uh, no offense to American friends, but uh, Canadian. Oh, yeah? I'm, yes. A and yes. why? Uh, it comes from my deep respect to that country. I know uh, all, there's no country that's perfect. Right. Acknowledging that, I fully respect the country. Have you ever lived in Canada? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you lived there? Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Well, that makes sense. Um, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask, are you an emotional person? I, yes, I, I have emotions. Yes, I do. And so are you an emotional person? Do you operate from your emotions or you do what's right? Uh, sometimes that kind of goes together, right? I mean, sometimes that's right. Sometimes it goes against it, right? I right. experience that moments where emotions and what's right, what's right, right, don't go together. Right. And especially those that's right. moments 
yes, there were moments in my life like I had to really see is this, and especially as a Buddhist, where there's a teaching of non-attachment, teaching of compassion, all these things, those are moments of truth, I think. Right. And we can always say nice things, yeah. right? But then we encounter those situations. I, when I was totally felt lost and they needed somebody else's decision, there were time like that. And I kind of regret and not regret, but maybe there is a certain regret but because we have to come back to our life and make ourselves and make those decisions. Yeah, right. There were times I didn't do that. Yeah. And those are the moments that I should have stayed true to myself. Yeah. So, uh, sorry, so the question was... Um, About being an emotional person. Right, right. Because um, that emotion can be amplified in a wrong way sometimes because yeah. the true voice can be very <laughs> subtle. Right? Yeah. That comes from within, or maybe for Christian people, it goes right. sort of penetrate through this universe. Uh, so we kind of get out of tune. Uh, so at least we try and make effort to stay aligned. I but uh, still, but emotions are part of phenomena that happens. Yeah. And we can't just pretend it's, they're not there. That's right. right. What is nirvana? Nirvana is. Uh, Nirvana. Uh, I can describe it, right? It's the light extinguished. Uh, there's no wind because there's no wind that. Uh, uh, so it's, it's a blown light, the flame is blown out. The very roots of a desire, a craving, is uh, illuminated. Illumi illuminated? Um, sorry, eliminated, eliminated. Yeah. In Zen, uh, I know it's such a generic term now, in my school as well, uh, Nirvana is the, the sort of, is available here now. Sorry, it's such a common expression now. Uh, Thich Nhat Hanh talks about it, and he, I like it when he says the kingdom of God yeah. is also here, here now. right here now. Right? Yeah, I and believe I, that. Uh -huh. uh, do you have that? Is it like perfect peace? Uh, the perfect peace embraces chaos simultaneously. That's kind of why I say. Is it like love? Perfect love? Right. Love. Oh. We use the word compassion, love, understanding, exist in the midst of chaos. In what? In the midst of chaos. I think I talked about the idea of lotus that's coming out of this mud. Um, so I'm trying to put into words. Um, Because it's a common question, right? You try to understand the world as it is. Try to be aligned, you know, how, what it is instead yeah. of what we think it is. Right. But then still, that, that by itself is quite you know, enlightening. But then people do still ask questions, but how would your love, or compassion, or caring nature would spring out of that, right? right. It kind of comes out of that. And that's often the question I get to receive. Um, again, my take is when you see people who are, you may think deserves to go to hell in a Christian sense. Right. Um, we see that as ourselves. We see, I see that there, right? Because it's like a depression or, you know, people who are, we see that as us. And then, like I said, it's a state that they are kind of oh, yeah. circumstantial, you know, because the person was born in a certain state, in a certain country, 
and this cause and effect has led the person, and maybe there are moments they could, let's say, make a choice, like you could choose to yeah. live different, but still, it goes both ways. It comes from intrinsic, right? And there's also extrinsic, you know, factors as well. So we try to understand it, and there's no end to this effort. Oh, I got Because we, yeah, okay. because we, we fail always, but. Let me ask yeah. this because of time. Um, Sorry, yeah. Um, do you get depressed? I experienced depression in my early 20s, and there are times still that still comes back as a wave, like, oh, yes, yes. And then one of the toughest thing about depression was depression itself, but what was more difficult was that not having people around me who could immediately see what it meant to oh, be okay. depressed. And I, think, I think it's the same with every, any other condition. Right now right? in this country, um, uh, Asian people mm. are being robbed, attacked, knocked out by black people. What do you think about that? I'm watching the news. Yeah. yeah. What do you think? And they're trying to blame it on the whites, but it's the blacks who are doing it. What do you think about what the blacks are doing to the Asian? Why is that? And what should be done about it? We know that when there's a sort of oppressive oppression coming in a systemic way, it happens in a very micro scale in the family. It happens in a company, let's say, or it happens in a society. That's, there's a reason why people do that. Maybe the person himself or herself might not be able to explain it, but there's this accumulation of this anger, frustration. I feel it's really sad um, for the family of the victims. Yeah. And this has to be stopped. But the way we, we want have it stop, um, has, I think it has a lot to do with this accumulation of this frustrations that couldn't be expressed otherwise, more skillfully. So that is a cause that's beyond our comprehension sometimes. So but, do you think the blacks are doing it because they need Nirvana, or is it someone else's fault? Because it's some Nirvana or somebody else's fault. I see that must be happening for a reason, because of, we say things happen for a reason, but I like to use it like things do happen because of a cause, right? So, when there is anger, we at least, I know it's easy to say this again, but at least we, we try and make an effort to understand. Anger, some teachers say, is a most unskillful way of expressing reaching out, reaching yeah. out, right? Yeah. So what is it that makes the person reach out in such an unskillful way? And then we say the crying of that, the suffering. How do we see that suffering or that? So why do you think the blacks are doing this? Attacking the Asian, why? I... I have some thoughts, but then I don't all want to say that I, I know. When I was invited to the BL Black Lives Matter movement, you I had were? to I was, I was invited to this uh, movement in Long Beach. Did you go? Yeah, I had a chance to. You support them? I support this uh, ancestral, you know, this, the, well, I had to start like from acknowledging my whole ignorance as their neighbors, I am their neighbors, right? And I would like to support them as long as that comes from the, this crying, this desperation, because that has a cause. Um, that has, if the cause, part of the cause is from our ignorance, from our indifference, that's something at least I could contribute to. But yeah. they're so evil, they're so angry, they're so out of control. Right. A bunch of fat, black, radical lesbians <laughs> who are monsters. Uh -huh. Who is to blame for what they're doing? They're so violent. Mm. 
Why do you support them? They're so violent. I don't support violence at But you all. support Black Lives Matter. What I talked about there was the story of Native Canadian people. That didn't help. I don't know if it helped or it didn't, you know. <laughs> but whose fault is it that the blacks are attacking the Asians? Mm. I do wonder, like, if it's, because they're targeting at vulnerable people, right? Elder. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know enough, probably, but I know that when there's this streams of tension, stream of anger that can be targeted, to trickled down into, toward the more vulnerable or powerless. And that, I just, I just wonder. What should be done about the blacks attacking the Asians? I, I agree with people that Asian people tend to be quiet, yep. right? We don't speak up. Yep. Uh, we have this patience is definitely a key term for something that we have inherited from our ancestors, including yep. our own parents and grandparents. But we're about to run out of time. What should be done to the blacks for attacking right. the Asians? Right. What should be done? We always come back to the same. You might think, you know, this is so lukewarm or something, but always comes back to this approach of understanding, listening and understanding. Should they endless understand no endless effort of this. And then put them in jail. Could we lock them away and throw away the key? If that let's see, if that helps the person to recognize the cause and effect yeah. and helps him and yeah. then, of course, there's a definitely this sorrow and pains and trauma of the family of the victims. So, um, but also, I guess, for, to help them as well to move on to, gosh, even the word move on sounds really, <clears throat> it's cruel because I wasn't there if it was my own family. Um, I talked about my son, right? I would probably surrender to emotions easily. Uh, but then in the end, we have to come back. I'm sorry, I'm like, um, so what, what we need to do as individuals or as a community? The Asian. Asian, as an Asian community. Right. We learn lessons from our ancestors. When Japanese Americans were incarcerated uh, and they came back, I think there's, people didn't speak up, right? right. People yeah. didn't speak up, but there's definitely that sort of ongoing unexpressed little anger that they didn't even know how to address at the time, yeah. right? Which there was more hope, space to, they so could at they least speak share, yeah, yeah, share that, right? Yeah. Um, but in, at the same time, they were great gardeners when they lost their jobs, they, yeah. their patience. You know, nowadays people talk about like Japanese thing, Japanese pop culture and Japanese thing, but some people say we can't overlook the fact that this sort of trust was not just the effort of Japanese in the mainland, it's young people, it's this invisible effort that yeah. people made. Yeah. It's the virtue of that flows as an ethnic community. Give me a short answer. Do uh, Buddhists believe in fighting in wars? No. You don't believe in fighting no. in war? You just let someone beat you up? There are stories like that in ancient times. Rather than fighting back? Um, no. Let's see, you know, in that- Would you fight back? Our goal is to help people understand. So let's say that I jump up right now. I'm black and I don't like the Asian. <laughs> if if that, I don't like if the that, Asian. <laughs> and I jump up and want to knock you out, would you fight me back? Uh, that's a, that's a, you know, 
if that helps you, right? If, but then if that helps you amplify your own desire or ego or something, and I might just go like, no, you're wrong, and stop your face, and then like wake up. Because <laughs> in, in a monastery, we do stuff like that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I got to ask, ask you some, I got to put you on the hot seat. Uh, sure, sure. We're running out of time, so uh, I yeah. need quick answers to these questions. All right? I got to put my guests on the hot seat, folks. Uh, so I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay, okay. The hot seat. Is it ever okay to tell a woman she's fat? No. Do you trust the vaccine for the Chinese virus? I trust what came out as a result. So if you ask me to say yes or no, I'd say yes, but then I acknowledge people who do have <laughs> other reactions. So. Is it okay to call the virus Chinese virus? No. What is a man? What is a man? What is a man? Human being, you mean? Yeah. What is human being? Wow. Human being is a form that we have we happen to have in this form, so we can practice this. We can, if I may borrow the Christian terms, we can make a choice, right? That's what a man is? That's what we are capable. Although, along with the nature of a human beings comes all these extra things and delusions, but we could still have this consciousness that allows us to walk. Is the Illuminati real? Sorry? Illuminati, is it real? Uh, was that, is that, uh, let's see, is that uh, a conspiracy theory or something? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Would you ever fight in a war? I hope not, but I've seen people who have to, who had to because of the situations. And I would be surprised I'm thrown into that situation, yeah. standing in the battlefield. Um, then what I would do there would be a real practice, I guess. Okay, short answers. Sure. If you get reincarnated, what would you want to come back as? <laughs> Can I say dolphin? Is that okay? A dolphin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is love? Oh. If I say this, I think people would be saying I'm imitating Dalai Lama, but I believe it. understanding with no judgment. Uh, have you ever smoked pot? Huh? Sorry? <laughs> have, have you ever smoked pot? No, no. Are you an alpha male or a beta male? Alpha male is... Okay, sorry, the difference is... One is weak and one is strong. I don't know. <laughs> Alpha male, straw, beta male. Beta. Oh, like a macho? You know. I don't think I, well, depends in context, I guess. I can try to be a little, a little bit macho, but probably the other, the, the other one. You probably beta? <laughs> probably. You're weak. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I Do you support be. abortion? <sighs> That's a big thing in the States. Sorry, I tried to make that so short. <laughs> I know, I feel like I'm dodging that question. Depends <laughs> is my answer. Depends. I know there's absolute quality, like value of life that has to be honored, but then all I can say is depends on that. Yeah. And last question, do you support LGBTQ key garbage? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Do you support that? Do I support LGBTQ um, movement or the presence of people who I let me just say yes. Let me just say yes. I do. Is I, it right I, or wrong? That is nothing to do with right or wrong. It's what I would like to say. Uh, did you have fun? 
I think so, yes. <laughs> I, I hope I was useful. <laughs> <laughs> so anything you'd like to promote, your church, your uh, website, or <laughs> Twitter account, or anything? Oh, thank you. Um, well, you know, I, I served two Buddhist communities, one in Long Beach and one in Montevallo. And I started working for the one in Montevallo. It's a small Buddhist community and it's a sort of just a Zen temple too, that I'm hoping that get people might get interested more. And what's your website? Like, there's a website, yes. If you type down Soul Zenji Buddhist Temple, it should show up on the Alright, thank you so much for coming. <laughs> oh, man. Thank you so that much was for amazing. your time. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Thank you all for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to like, follow, tweet, subscribe, share, ring the bell, and visit our merch. We have amazing merch. And again, we are on Patreon. So thank you for all your support. Let me hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you again. Thank you very much. All right. Next time on The Fallen State. He's an artist, Arthur Kwan Lee. If you're more, grew up with a father at home, more conservative background, you're gonna make work that actually has a certain standard. I had six solo shows last year and I won Artist of the Year. They want to show distance from me. It's so strange because artists were all about being against the government. I don't care if people attack me with this and the other. I mean, it is what it is. How would you describe uh, Donald Trump? He was a defector from this right. global elite. Destabilize the society, demoralize them, create a crisis, and then normalize it. That's, a, that's the formula. Like yeah. They're looking for systemic racism everywhere. Yeah. I'm a romantic. I always tell people I was pushed to the right. Can I put you in the hot seat? Yes. Yes, yeah, you can. Did Jeffrey Epstein kill himself? Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show. Thank you so much that was uh, fun. for the opportunity. It's, it's my training, so <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I have to get to rest a little bit uh, yeah. after. Yeah, I have one more to do and I'll be done. Okay.